All right, good morning and welcome into Verbling.com. This is Adrienne here for Let's Read Short Stories. So uh, this morning we are going to be reading an advanced English story together. This is Let's Read Short Stories Part 1. If you don't get to fin uh, come to Part 2 uh, tomorrow, that is A-OK, -okay, no big deal. Um, you'll have the document. You can finish reading it on your own. Um, but this is most likely going to take us two classes. We'll sort of see see how things go. Um, so if we get finished today, then there will be a different short story for part two tomorrow. Um, and if not, we'll continue continue with part two tomorrow. So again, this is Let's Read Short Stories. I often do Let's Read BBC News, but I thought we would try something a little bit different to, to shake things up a little bit. Um, so the short stories that I'm using are, um, they're short stories uh, by English or uh, English speaking authors. Um, so what we're going to be doing is focusing on famous short stories, okay? Uh, short stories that are very well known in both British and American culture. So for example, the story we're going to be reading today is called All Summer in a Day. It's by an American author by the name of Ray Bradbury. Uh, Ray Bradbury actually wrote a really famous novel called Fahrenheit 451. You may have heard of it, you may not have. It's a very, very famous um, American novel that was written in the 1950s. Ray Bradbury is a science fiction author. So that means he writes fiction, so it's not real, but it feels real. Okay, he often writes about the future. He often writes about the future or what he imagines the future might be like. So he's one of uh, the most, I would say, celebrated American authors. He's one of my favorite authors. Um, his writing is not happy. I'll go ahead and warn you guys right now. Um, Ray Bradbury does not write happy stories. He does not. Um, his, his books, his stories generally end um, at best leaving you feeling a little disturbed or perhaps a little melancholy. Melancholy is an English synonym for sad um, with a lot of thinking. You're just sort of sad and you're really thinking. And at worst, Ray Bradbury's stories leave you feeling like you've been kicked in the gut, which is an English phrase meaning, ugh, makes you feel terrible uh, when you get this. So I will give you that, that heads up, but he is one of my favorite authors. Um, I used to teach his stories uh, when I was a literature teacher all the time, so I'm very familiar with them, and I thought you guys would enjoy, hopefully enjoy his um, one of his stories today as much as I do. Uh, so with that introduction to Let's Read Short Stories, Ray Bradbury, uh, let me go ahead and welcome in Michael and Jade, Ismail, Isaac, and Anton, and let me ask you guys, I'm going to ask you to tell us good morning and tell us what, how do I say this? Tell us a little about one of your favorite stories. Maybe tell us the name and the author so we can look it up and maybe find it. Um, even if it is in a different language, maybe we can find an English, an English translation or a translation on our own. Uh, so Anton, Anton, tell us, what's uh, one of your favorite stories or one of your favorite authors, Anton? Okay. Uh, for me, one of the most important authors, uh, because, because, because uh, perhaps my childhood uh, was mm -hmm. important for me, is Juan Ramón Jiménez, a Spanish mm -hmm. author, mm -hmm. who wrote about uh, a, a donkey, <laughs> a sweet donkey, uh, ah, okay. whose, whose name is Platero. He's famous, he's poetry, mm -hmm. and he's some, some kind of uh, sweet uh, uh, writing, for especially Aww. for children, but it, it, it has uh, uh, a profound feeling also for adults. Oh wow, I, those are my favorite things. You know, it's written for children, but adults are really touched or moved by it as well. Those are some of the best authors. Yeah. Yes, and it, it, it uses uh, 
words with different meanings. You have to try to mean what she is uh, speaking about. But uh, so because this reason, I think it's interesting for children mm -hmm. to understand the principal meaning. And you, mm -hmm. if you are reading with them, you can explain what mm -hmm. other meanings have. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, it's cute because it's, it's some, some uh, kind of uh, soft animal. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful writing uh, yeah. and profound in Aww. itself. Yeah, uh, type type the name for us in the chat because I wanna I wanna look it up. Um, and Antonio, good morning. Um, we are telling a little bit about um, maybe our favorite author or a favorite story that we have. So, Antonio, tell us who's your favorite author or maybe a, a favorite story that you have. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, my favorite uh, actor uh, is uh, Kenny Reeves, uh, and uh, my favorite uh, story. Mm -hmm. is uh, the movie Matrix, The Matrix. Ah, okay, your fa oh, okay. So your favorite actor is Keanu Reeves. He's good, yeah. he's good. What yeah. about your favorite author? Your favorite author. So someone who writes. Uh, someone uh, who writes. Uh, mm, uh, Stephen King, because ah. I, I'm <laughs> fond of... Um, can say science fiction, ah, science okay. fiction books or science fiction mm -hmm. movies. Okay, good. Well, you'll really like our story today because it's uh, science fiction, so you'll you'll yeah. really enjoy that. And Isaac, what about you? Who's your favorite author or a favorite story, Isaac? Uh, I don't think that anyone here uh, know this author because it's mostly right um, history. Mm -hmm. uh, but his name is. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari, which is an Israeli name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, this is he is my uh, favorite author. Very, and he writes history. What kind of history does he write? Does he write like Israeli history or Hebrew history or no? He writes Mediterranean uh, history or <laughs> uh, worldwide worldwide history because ah. he summarized the beginning of life in in general uh, in nice. one book. This is his specialty. Very, very good, very good. Oh yeah, I love history, Isaac. So I haven't heard of him though, so I'll have to, I'll have to look him up. And Ismail, what about you? Who's your favorite author, or maybe a favorite story? Hi, teacher. Uh, Hi. I don't remember uh, their name, but my favorite story is Seagull. The Seagull. I think I know that. Jonathan Livingston. I, yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, I've heard of him. So you really like him, Ismail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of him, but I've never read him. Maybe I need to to check him out. And it's Jay, a short story. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a short story. Yes. Even better. Even better. I'll have yes. to look this up. Maybe we will um, need to read this um, for one of our short story days. But in short, it tells lots of things. Okay. I love those kinds. Yes. Those are good. And Jade, what about you? Who's your favorite author or maybe one of your favorite stories? Uh, Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you read from him? Uh, Les Miserables. Ah, you read all of it? Yes, that's my favorite. It's so, so long. It's so long, but uh, since I was a teenager. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I am impressed, Jade. Now, did you read it in French, or did you uh, read it in Chinese? First uh, in Chinese, then uh, uh, in French. <laughs> nice. Even better. Even yeah. better. I'm impressed. I couldn't even read it in English, Jade. Oh, I tried. Okay. Now they have kind of this play, play opera. Yeah. Yes. Opera play. That's a very good. Too. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, we would call it um, a musical. Yeah. A musical. Yeah. It's very good. Now, if you do like Les Miserables, you might also really like Jade, The Count of Monte Cristo, mm -hmm. um, which is by um, another French author, um, Alexandre Dumas. 
Um, oh, it's okay. really I good. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> he is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Duma. Yeah, it's a uh, really Duma good one. Brothers. I think Duma has big brother, little brother or something. Duma. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that sounds right. I think Duma has two brothers, like Duma family. That's so neat. I did not know that. Yeah, I think so. Is Duma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, and Michael, what about you? Favorite author or favorite story? Well, I don't read um, literature. Mm -hmm. I used to read when I was in uh, school, high school, mm -hmm. and that's all. But nowadays, I don't read so much. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, have you ever heard uh, of Thomas? Uh, sorry, Tom Hopkins. Yes. Who is that? I have just heard of him. I don't know what he's written. I've probably seen his name like in a bookstore or something. Well, he's uh, like, I don't know how famous he is, mm -hmm. like, really, but he imply he says that he uh, kind of implies that he's kind of a uh, famous figure. And um, so he um, uh, uh, wrote, writes uh, story, not stories, he writes books about uh, sales about mm -hmm. uh, how to be successful in your career, in your job, how mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. speak with people, how to communicate, how to understand, how to sell something to that person, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. to sell an idea or something abstract. Mm -hmm. so he's kind of uh, very... Uh, mm -hmm. And I love his like uh, uh, books and um, articles. I'm ah, okay. tied to his uh, Facebook uh, page and to uh -huh. his email. So, to, I come to his webinars. Oh webinars, wow! <laughs> once in a, in a month or twice nice, in a month, like nice. in English, and mm -hmm. uh, you can listen. Like uh, he's talking about these kind of ideas. Very like, good. He's, I think he's like really awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So, what about like the famous Russian authors, Michael? You you don't like Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or anything uh, like that? <laughs> well, what can I say? I'm not really into <laughs> literature. I That's true. Think um, um, I studied like marketing, yeah. It's yeah, kind of economic okay. degree, and they studied more like yeah. sci like um, economics, like mm -hmm. this kind of sciences, and mm -hmm. I'm really like in this kind of uh, more real things. Right. Not in so I I'm if I, <laughs> if I liked like literature or something mm -hmm. like that, I would go definitely like a teacher to to study or something like mm -hmm. that, or like um. Storyteller. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> but I, I really, I'm really not like to take a book and to read 100 uh, pages. I, I cannot do That's that. That's okay. I understand. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. And Tatiana, what about you? Who's your favorite author or maybe a favorite story? Tatiana? Yeah. Uh, of course, I like. I'm from Russia, and mm -hmm. I like uh, our Russian authors. Yes. Uh, in Chekhov, Dostoevsky, of course, but yes. uh, I've, I read uh, their poems uh, and um, stories uh, only when I was at school and at mm -hmm. university, mm -hmm. and now, unfortunately, I haven't got uh, time to yes. reread them, but uh, now we live in another century. We uh -huh. live in the technology and um, the um, uh, process, technology process, uh, mm -hmm. go on and on, and uh, now I try to read a lot of literature about personal growth. Mm, nice. And, uh, I like uh, Anthony Robbins. I read mm -hmm. uh, his book, um, mm -hmm. Power, Awaken yes. the Giant Within, <laughs> yes, and um, I mm, watch uh, uh, his lectures, mm -hmm. and uh, I... Um, because I want, I try to get rid of fears, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, get rid of um, um, habits, uh, bad habits, and uh, uh, for example, um, I stop, uh, I uh, give up, gave up eat meat, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and um, I try to read a lot of literature about how to be healthy, mm -hmm. uh, healthy, wealthy, <laughs> and wise. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I have a grandson and I read, uh, now I read a lot of literature for children, for yes. babies, for little children. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, there is a difference uh, between what I like uh, to read in Russian language and yes. what I need to read in English language. Yes, yes. 
it's very important because, for example, um, two days ago I finished to read Harry Potter mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because it's uh, of course for children. But uh, um, I think that um, I'm a teacher and. And a little bit shame for me, not uh, because I don't know <laughs> Harry Potter and um, um, jo Joanne Rowling what uh, wrote, and that's why I made up my mind to read uh, Harry Potter. Uh, for um, and uh, now I begin to read The Wizard of Oz. Um, and uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> We can't hear you. Sorry, guys. My Google crashed for just a second, but I am. <laughs> I don't even think it told you that I left, which is really funny. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. And Tatiana, I was going to tell you, I love Harry Potter. I'm <laughs> glad you read it. Oh, really? um, and I've actually been considering starting uh, us reading that together, actually. No. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started with All Summer in a Day. You have the link to the story. It's attached to the class documents, but of course I will um, pull it up as well um, so that we can take a look at that together. So a couple of things you need to know about All Summer in a Day. You need to know that it is science fiction. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not real, right? Um, that's the number one thing you need to know about it. Um, the other things you need to know about All Summer in a Day, you need to know, and I mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, you need to know that Ray Bradbury um, writes about imagined futures. So he was writing in the 1950s, okay, he was writing in the 1950s, 1960s primarily, and he was writing about possible futures. This story is set, so the setting or the location is a classroom, okay, of children on the planet Venus, all right? So in the story, people have left Earth. Some people still live on Earth, uh, but there's a colony or a group of people living on Venus. The other thing you need to know is that it rains constantly on the planet Venus and it only stops raining once every seven years. Okay, so that's a little bit that you need to know about what's going on here. Our main character's name is Margot. It looks like Margot, but it's pronounced Margot. The T is silent. And she lived on Earth. She lived on Earth. The other children have only ever lived on Venus. Margot lived on Earth and she remembers Earth. So she remembers sunshine and she remembers what it's like not to have the rain. So that's just a little bit of the background information that you need uh, to sort of help you get in the story and to be able to construct some really good meaning. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to have you guys help me read this. So Anton, can you go ahead and start reading for us? And I'll just have you read until I say stop. Okay. Ready? Now? Soon. Do the science thing really know? Will it happen today? Will it? Look, look. See for yourself. The children press to each other like, like so many roses, so many weeds. Intermixed, intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun. It rained. It had been rain for seven years. Thousand up, up on thousand of days compound and filled from the end to the other with rain, with the drum and gush of water, with the sweet crystal fall of showers and the con con concussion. Con concussion of storms so heavy. They were tidal waves come over the island. The island. A thousand forests have been crushed under the rain and grown up a thousand times to be crushed again. 
and this was the way life, wa life was forever on the planet Venus. And this was the schoolroom school of the children, of the rocket men and women who had come to a reigning world to set up civilization and live our, out their lives. Good, very good. So let me hear you say hidden, Anton. Hidden. Hidden. Good. And concussion. Concussion. Good, very good. So what questions do we have here? Do we have any questions about words, first of all? Title or title? Title. Oh, title. Title. Mm hmm. Yeah, tidal waves. Weeds, intermixed. Weeds. So, weeds are um, the plants that you don't want. So, oh, okay. when, yeah, when someone has a garden and you have to pull them out. Because yeah. they, yeah. And then intermixed is just when things are all mixed together. Okay. Yeah. And um, um, to leave out, uh, mm -hmm. what does, to leave out, what does it mean, this verb? Yeah, so to, and live out their lives is just to live the rest of their lives or to continue living. So we often say, um, like, so in this case, they, they came to Venus to live out their lives. This is telling us they're not going back to Earth. They're here to stay. They're okay. going to live the rest of their lives until they die here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. Peering out? What does it mean uh, with the drum and gush of water? Okay, good. So we've got a couple of questions here. Um, peering out is just looking out, but in sort of a cautious way. Um, like if you were looking behind a curtain to see what's outside. Um, and then with the drum and gush of water. I love this sentence. He's using sound words to really help us understand how heavy the rain is. Okay, so with the drum, like, with like literally the drumming and the, uh, and the gush of water. A gush of water Imagine if you, if you um, are trying to turn on a water faucet and no water's coming out, and then you turn it and you turn it and you turn it, and then suddenly all the water comes out at one time. We would call that a gush. So it's when so it's when there's no water and then there's a large amount of water coming very quickly. Okay. Yeah, and also likewise the concussion of storms. Uh, so a concussion, you know, is when you get hit in the head, and you you have an injury. Uh, so it's he's sort of using this again to to illustrate or to give us an idea. The concussion of storms so heavy, so it's a beating or a banging of of storms is what he's doing with that there. So he uses a lot of really good descriptive words. Anything else here? All right, so let's go ahead and read the next little bit. And I'm going to have Antonio, can you read this part for us? Yes. Um, it's stopping, it's stopping. Yes, yes. Margot, stood apart uh, from, from them, from these children who could never remember a time when there wasn't rain and rain and rain. They were all nine years old, and if there had been a day seven years ago when the sun came out for an hour and showered its face to the sun and wood, they could not recall. Sometimes at night, she heard, their she, uh, heard them still in her remembrance, and she knew they were dreaming and remembering gold or a, a yellow crayon or a coin large enough to buy the world, the world with. She knew, they thought, they remembered a, a warmness like a blushing in the face, in the body. 
in the arms and legs and trembling, trembling hands. But then they always uh, awake, um, awoke to the tutting uh, drum, the endless shaking down of the clear bed, bed pid, pid. Ni pid nicles, nicleses upon the roof. The work, the gardens, the forest, and their dream were gone. All day yesterday they had read uh, in class about the sun, about how like a lemon it was and how hot, and they had written small stories or essay, essays or poems about it. Very good. So a couple of words here, Antonio. Yes. S stir. 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 Good. Stir. Yeah. What does it mean? Um, so in this case, so stir can mean two things. It can mean mix, like I stir my coffee. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it means just sort of moving in an uncomfortable way. So, you know, maybe you it starts raining in the middle of the night, and you start to stir in your sleep. You start to sort of move and move uh. about, and you're sort of a little uncomfortable. Um, so let's talk about this paragraph for a second. Um, what he's doing here is he's doing something, he's using something that we call imagery. So he's using words that we wouldn't necessarily use to describe something, to describe it, um, to really give us um, a feeling uh, here. He's really, really, really giving us a feeling here, um, mm, yes. making us feel as if we are, are the children and as if we don't really know what the sun is like. So he uses words like and in phrases like she knew they were dreaming and remembering gold, the color yeah. gold, or a yeah. yellow crayon, or a coin large enough to buy the world with. So they're in their minds they're seeing what looks like a coin and it's huge and so she thinks that they're remembering a little bit about the sun a little bit about the sun. Um, mm -hmm. I really like this sentence here, and we're going to talk about this. But then they always awoke to the tatting drum, the endless shaking down of clear bead necklaces upon the roof, the walk, the gardens, the forest, and their dreams were gone. So the tatting drum, tatting is actually a word we use to describe the sound of a drum, uh, specifically the sound of a drum, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. Um, and the endless shaking down of clear bead necklaces. So he's literally saying like the shaking down would be like this sort of movement. So the shaking, he's, he's wanting us to picture, right, um, bead necklaces falling from the sky so that we can sort of picture what? What is, yeah. he, what is he describing here when he's Stop. saying... Not the stars, although that's a really good guess. So with clear bead necklaces shaking down from the sky. What is he describing? Uh, and heavy, heavy rain. Heavy rain. And heavy rain. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. And when the children are remembering uh, gold or a yellow crayon, what are they remembering? Uh, the sun. Yeah, they're remembering yes. the sun. Mm -hmm. The sun, the sun. It crayon is it, a, a color. Yes, is yeah um, something that used to um, to make pictures to make yeah uh, yeah yeah a crayon are the the short little colored sticks that children use. Yes, right? yes. To, to, yeah, to to color pictures. Very good. So, who can tell me um, how old the children were the last time the sun came out? Two years old. Nine, um, nine years old. No, the last was well, they were two years uh, old because they are now they are nine years old nine and uh, years old. Um, the sun comes out uh, um, every seven years. Mm. Yes, so nine uh, minus uh, seven, they were two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they're nine now. Um, nine. We know though that Margot does remember the rain because she, she knows all these things. She does remember it. Um, so all day yesterday, they had read in class about the sun, about how like a lemon it was, and how hot. And they had written small stories or essays 
or poems about it. And now I'm going to have Isaac, can you read for me? Uh, yes. Uh, I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just one hour. Uh, that was Margaret poem, reading quite a voice in its still classroom while the rain was falling outside. Oh, you didn't write that, protested one of the boys. I did, said Margaret, I did. William, said the teacher. Well, that was yesterday. Now the rain was stalking. Slackening. Slackening. Mm -hmm. And the children were crushed in a great thick window. Uh, where te where's the teacher? She'll be back. She'd better hurry. We'll miss it. Okay, good. I want to stop for just a second. So, uh, whose poem is this? And anyone can tell me, whose poem is this? I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just one hour. Who wrote that? Margot's. <laughs> Margot's. Yeah, it's Margot's poem, yeah. And did they believe that she wrote it, or did they call her a liar? They should call her a liar. <laughs> yeah, you didn't write that, protested one of the boys. I did, said Margot, I did. Right, so she she did write it, but they don't they don't think that she does. So... What does this tell us? This right here. What does this tell us about how the other children feel about Margot? What do we think? Do we think that they like and accept her? Or do we think possibly they don't really like her? Based on this one line, what do we think? They don't really like her. They don't adopt her. Don't. Yeah. So they probably don't really like her very much. Um, you didn't write that. They're, they're being sort of rude to her. Not very nice. They're teasing her. Yeah, they're teasing her. Exactly, exactly. But that was yesterday. And now the rain was slackening. It was lightening. It was starting to get less heavy. And the children were crushed in the great thick windows. So if you've ever seen a group, I know you've all seen this, um, like a group of kids and they get excited about something and they all like run over to one area and they're sort of pushing and they're crushing each other together so they're trying to fit into a small space to see so that's what that means they were crushed in the great thick windows um, so any questions about this part any questions here Slackening. Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, slackening means to get to get less heavy or to get lighter. So ah. the rain is stopping. Basically, it's getting light. It's not stopped yet, but it's it's looking like it's going to stop. Ah, okay. It's getting lighter. Mm -hmm. It's uh, decreasing. Yes, it's easing. Mm -hmm. Decreasing. Yes. yes, decreasing. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, but that was yesterday. Now the rain was slackening, and the children were crushed in the great thick windows. Where's teacher? She'll be back. She'd better hurry. We'll miss it. And let me have Ismael. Can you read for us, please? They turned on themselves. They turned on themselves like a feverish wheel. All tumbling spokes. Margot stood alone. She was a very frail girl who looked as if she had been lost in the rain for years and the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes and the red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair. She was an old photograph dusted from an album, lightened away, and if she spoke or at all her voice would be a ghost. Now she stood separate, staring at the rain and the loud wet walk beyond the huge glass. What are you looking at? said William. Margot said nothing. Speak when you are spoken to. He gave her a show, but she didn't move. Rather, she let herself be moved only by him and nothing else. 
Good, very good. So a couple of things here. They turned on themselves like a feverish wheel, all tumbling spokes. So when we use feverish to describe people, they're full of emotion and they're acting in sort of erratic or hard to predict ways. Um, Sometimes we say people are feverish if they're sick and they have a fever, they're feverish. But we can also use this to mean like a crowd or a mob when they're acting sort of crazy or out of control. So they're a feverish wheel, right? A wheel goes round and round. So they're sort of just moving in all different directions. Like there's no real sense of direction, they're just moving around, tumbling is falling and twisting, and the spokes are um, the straight lines that connect the inside of the wheel. So if you think about like, for example, a bicycle tire, right, or a bicycle wheel, and here's the wheel, right, and there's those lines in the middle, like that, those are the spokes the spokes of a wheel. So they're all tumbling spokes, so everything's just sort of chaotic is what he's what he's describing here. It's chaotic. Um, this is interesting. Margot stood alone. She was a very frail girl who looked as if she had been lost in the rain for years, and the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes, and the red from her mouth, and the yellow from her hair. She was an old photograph dusted from an album whitened away, and if she spoke at all, her voice would be a ghost. Now she stood, separate, staring at the rain and the loud, wet world beyond the huge glass. What do we know about Margot based on this paragraph right here? What do we find out about her? What does she look like? Yes, she looked like a blonde. Mm -hmm. She was with a um, I guess a blue eyes and uh, and uh, a red mouth. Okay. Now she she isn't uh, uh, um, she doesn't look like that because without the sun all is uh, is white in, in any way. Yeah, right. And and does she look like she's very healthy? No, she yeah. doesn't look very healthy. Okay. So someone else tell me how do we know she's not very healthy? Dust on her face. Okay, so it's he describes her as looking like she's she's an old picture. He describes uh -oh. her as looking like an old picture. Oh, 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 we can say the voice would be a ghost. It means that she isn't uh, so um, she isn't uh, uh, so well. True, very true. So uh, someone, very very good, Antonio. So uh, somebody else, tell me, how do we know? Um, so Michael mentioned. Also, that she he describes her as looking like an old photograph. Um, dusted from an album just means like if you find an old photo album and there's dust covering all the pictures. So, yeah, yeah absolutely, Michael. And what else? Someone else tell us. How do we know she doesn't look very healthy? She was a real girl. Real. Ah, very good, Jade. She was very frail. She looked like she was going to break. Physically weak. Yeah, she looks physically weak, exactly. Um, the, it looks like the rain had washed out the color from yeah. her eyes and the red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair. And Antonio mentioned part of this is probably because she's not getting any sun, right? But yes. why else? Who else can, can tell me? Why else do you think the rain has washed out the blue from her eyes? Is it just that she's not getting any sun and so she's not tan? Or is, is there something emotional going on here? What do we think? Maybe Anton or Tatiana or Rafa or um, Francis or some, someone who maybe hasn't said anything yet. Uh, what do we think? Why? What else is going on here? She looks so depressed. And like um, she was separate, um, very pale, with a lot of suffering. At least this paragraph transmit this idea, not exactly 
in the words, but uh, mm, the girl is so frail, so pale that uh, it looks like getting a depression mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly, Rafa. I I'm glad you said that word. She looks she looks depressed. So it's not just that she's not getting sun, and so she's pale. She is different from these other children. They have never really seen the sun, so they don't know what they're missing, right? They don't know anything but the rain. She, however, remembers the sun. She knows what the sun is like. She misses the sun. Imagine if we moved to a place where it rained for seven years, right? We would probably be really depressed. Seven years of rain. So she's a depressed little girl. Absolutely, she's very sad. There's this deep sadness to her. Um, she also, he, he tells us something interesting. She stood separate. So is she part of the group? Does she belong with these other kids? No. No. So how do we know, Tatiana? Uh, because she stood separate. Mm -hmm. Other children may be in another place and she separates them and uh, staring at the rain, but um, uh, she didn't uh, look like a member of the group. Exactly. So she's looking at the same thing they are, but she doesn't look like a member of the group. Exactly. And then this tells us also something interesting. What are you looking at? said William. Margot said nothing. Speak when you're spoken to. He gave her a shove. He pushed her, but she didn't move. She just let herself be moved by him. So we see that this is so sad. He, he yells at her, what are you looking at? And then he pushes her. Does she push back? Does she defend herself at all? What do you guys think? Does she push him back? Does she no. defend herself? No, no, she didn't. No, she didn't move. Okay, so what does she do, Ismail? She doesn't move. She just what? She let herself be moved only by him and exactly. nothing else. Exactly. She just stands there. So He's so mean to her, and, and she just stands there. And this tells us again that she is very, very what? Yeah. Depressed. Depressed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because depressed people, if, if you've ever been depressed or you know someone that's been depressed, they, they often don't really do anything. They often just sort of stand and stare or lie down. There, there's no, uh, in English we say there's no fight to them. Yeah. And they the feel themselves like there are nobody around them. Yeah, it's almost like they're alone. Yeah, very good. So what also does this tell us about, what does this tell us again about how her classmates see her? So we got an idea earlier, we thought, oh, they're teasing her. But do they just tease her, or is it worse than that? Because she doesn't look like the other children. Mm -hmm. That's why they tease her. Yeah, she doesn't. She she doesn't look like them. And even if she physically looks like them, she yes. doesn't act like them. Maybe she looks like outcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she looks like she's an outcast or an outsider. And how how do they treat her? Is this just like friendly, you know, kids just teasing each other? Or is this feel more serious, the way they treat her? They're abusing her verbally. They're verbally abusing her. Very yeah. good, Michael. And not just verbally. Very physically. Yeah, physically too, right? He Where? gave her a shove. Oh, okay. What's yeah. A push. Oh, okay. What yeah. is to speak when you are spoken to? What, what is that? Good question. So he's saying, you better talk when I talk to you. Answer me. Okay. So a shove is a push, but let me show you guys exactly what I see in my head uh, when I read shove in English. Mm, like that. 
Wow. Okay. So what are you looking at? Uh, right? Answer me. So they are really, really bullying her. Right? Now, yeah. do we know, has Margot done anything really to, to deserve this? Have we seen anything she's done to deserve the bullying? No. No, no. Just kind of answer. Yeah, she's done nothing. She's, but it's like Tatiana said, she's different. She's depressed. She's very pale. She's very sad. She remembers the sun. They don't. So there's this separation between her and the other kids. Any other questions we have here, you guys? Any other questions? All right. So let's go ahead and read read the next part. And let me have let me have Jade, can you read this part for us? Yes. They age away from her. They would not look at her. She felt them go away. And this was because she would play no games with them in the inchoing tunnels of the underground city. If they tagged her and ran, she stood blinking after them and did not follow. When the class sung songs about happiness and life and games, her lips barely moved. Only when they sang about the sun and the summer did her lips move as she watched the drenched windows. And then, of course, the biggest crime of all was that she had come here only five years ago from Earth. And she remembered the sun and the way the sun was and the sky was when she was four in Ohio. And they, they had been on Venus all their lives. And they had been only two years. Two years old, when last the sun came out and had long since forgotten the color and the heat of it, and the, the way it really was, but Margaret remembered. Good, very good. So let me go back up to here for a second. So they edged away from her. Just they moved away from her. They and moved away from her. Mm -hmm. Away from her. Yeah, they would not look at her. She felt them go away. And this was because she would play no games with them in the echoing tunnels of the underground city. What's the echoing? Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, echo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you say, hello, hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just got some new information here. They live, where do they live on Venus? Tunnel. <laughs> Tunnel. Tunnel. They live in tunnels underground. Underground, yes. Yeah. I'm assuming because it rains so hard all the time. If they tagged her and ran, she stood blinking after them and did not follow. When the class sang songs about happiness and life and games, her lips barely moved. Only when they sang about the sun and the summer did her lips move as she watched the drenched windows. And then, of course, the biggest crime of all was that she had come here only five years ago from Earth. And she remembered the sun and the way the sun was and the sky was when she was four in Ohio. And they, they had been on Venus all their lives. And they had been only two years old when the last sun came out and had long since forgotten the color and heat of it and the way it really was. But Margot remembered. So they try to play with her. Does she play back with them? No. 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 They tagged her and ran, but she stood blinking after them. Um, tagged. <laughs> tagged. I think probably almost every country has this game. Um, it's when you, you're like, um, 
Yes, yes. You're, it. you're it. You like touch somebody and then you run away, right? You tag okay. them. You touch them very quickly. Tone um, by tone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then the biggest crime of all was that she had come here five years ago. So they've lived on Venus all their lives, but not Margot. So she really is an outsider, isn't she? She's not just depressed. She doesn't play with them. And she hasn't been there her whole life like they have. So let's read this next, next little bit. And let me have Michael read this part for us. It's like a penny. It's like a penny, she said once, eyes closed. No, it's not, the children cried. It's like a fire, she said in the stove. You're lying, you don't remember, cried the children. To read the, yeah, go part. ahead and read the next part too. But she remembered and stood quietly apart from all of them and watched the par the patterning pattern. Patterning. So there is R N, yeah, or mm -hmm. M? Yeah, there is an R. Yeah, R N. Patterning. Okay, patterning <laughs> windows, windows, and once a month ago she had refused to shower in the school shower rooms, had clutched her hands to her ears and over her head, screaming the water mustn't touch touch her head. So after that, dimly, 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 she sens she sensed it. She was different, and they knew her difference and kept away. Good. So let me stop there. So a penny is just um, what? What's a penny? Currency. Yeah, it's like a, a coin. Um, it's, it's like a copper coin, so it's sort of brown or orange in color. Um, and when it says they watch the patterning windows. This is a little difficult to explain, so I'm going to have to show you. Um, so a pattern is a shape, basically. Um, so you know how when it's raining really hard and the rain is hitting the windows and the water sort of like comes together and then it'll separate and then it'll move over here? You, you, the raindrops do that. Um, and so that's what that's talking about, the patterning windows. They're just watching the rain sort of move in shapes on the windows, is what that's that's saying. What other uh -huh. questions do we have here? Dimly. Mm, dimly. Dimly means without a lot of light, or very quietly, very in a very subtle way. Okay. So she very slowly, very quietly starts to realize that she's different from the other kids. Um, because she has this sort of, it sounds like she has a breakdown, like almost like an emotional breakdown uh, where she totally freaks out and won't take a shower uh, because she can't stand the thought of, of any more water, right? It's raining all the time and she can't stand the thought of even taking a shower because she hates the water so much. And so these kids really think she's weird, right? They really think she's just strange. They, they don't understand her. Um, but she hasn't, you know, she hasn't really done anything wrong. She's just, she's depressed, like like Tatiana said. She's depressed. Um, so let me have Rafa. Rafa, can you go ahead and read that she remembered? Sorry, there was talk. There was talk. There was talk. There was talk that her father and mother were taking her back to Earth next year. It seemed vital to her that they do so, though it could mean the loss of thousands of dollars to her family. And so the children hate her, hated mm -hmm. her for all this reason of big and little consequence. They hated her pale snow face, her waiting, her waiting silence, her tininess and her possible future. Get away, the boy gave, gave her another push. What are you waiting for? Then, for the first time, she turned and looked at him. 
and what she was waiting for was her eye. Good. Stop him there. You're going to stop him there. All right, guys. I'm not sure where that. Okay. Um. So this word is vital, vital, or very, very important. Like, like a matter of. Ah, there we go. I found it. Okay. Um, so Antonio, yeah, there you go. There you go. There was a lot of static. So vital just means um, it's so important. It's important for your life. It's vital. So her mother and father are talking about taking her back to Earth uh, for a visit um, because she's so depressed, um, even though it's going to cost them a lot of money. Um, and so, yeah, the children hated her for all of these reasons, big and little. They hated her paleness, they hated how she was silent, they hated her thinness, and they hated her possible future. They hated the idea that she might get to go where? To the earth. Exactly. That she might get to go back. Get away, the boy gave her another push. What are you waiting for? And then, for the first time, she turned and looked at him. And what she was waiting for was in her eyes. What is she waiting for, guys? When uh, her parents uh, uh, bring her to uh, Earth. Okay, maybe. I think definitely that's part of what she's waiting for, for sure. What's, ha what's about to happen, though? Also, rain. Um, she, she could be getting furious. Okay, she could be. She could be like having enough of all this stuff. Ismael, what do you think she's waiting on, Ismail? She's waiting for the sun. Exactly. She's waiting for the sun. These other kids are also waiting, but not like she is. They've never seen it. They're waiting to see something new that they've never seen before. She's they waiting. They have forgotten. Yeah, they've forgotten. They don't know. She's waiting to see something that she has been missing for seven years, and that's different, right? They're waiting to see something new. She's waiting to see something that she's been missing for seven years. Uh, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Wasn't uh, Margot the same age like other children? Yes, but she came to Earth, or she came to Venus a lot later. Ah. Yeah, so they were all born on Venus. And she, like, they immigrated, basically, to Venus when she was yeah, four. I yeah. Know somebody says that they didn't remember the sun. I think that they forget the sun. But they oh, yeah. saw the sun. They did, but they were two years old, and so they don't really remember it. Mm. Yeah, and so since she was a little bit older, she really remembers it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... All right, so we're going to have to stop here, um, and we will continue this tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead. Antonio, there's really something going on with your mic. I'm not sure what, what it is. Um, so if you take a look at my verbling schedule, you'll see that I have a Let's Read Short Stories tomorrow. It's um, about 1 p.m., uh, GMT plus one time, but you can take a look and see what it is uh, for your time as well. Um, and we'll finish reading all summer in a day um, tomorrow. So really, really good. Uh, we learned some new words, things like vital and patterning. Um, but we also got to read the first half of a really famous American short story. So we will go ahead and finish this tomorrow for Let's Read Short Stories. And thank you guys so much for coming, and I hope to see you guys later today for some of my vocabulary classes. Um, and I'll see you next time. Really, really good job, everyone. Okay, bye, bye. bye, guys.